Hi, welcome back. As you recall from the past video, we installed Cloud Network Controller in Azure. So we would do the same for AWS. Following this idea, let's take a look at the building blocks that would be configured. We would focus on AWS Cloud and the Infra account. The automated process through the marketplace will launch the Cloud Network Controller. After the controller is spun, we will configure it. And that will deploy the Catalyst's 8000V in charge of the interconnection. If you want to learn more about the inner workings of the deployment, you can watch previous videos in this channel. Now that we know our building blocks, let's check the activities in detail in order to install the solution. We must follow two easy steps. First, we would install from AWS Marketplace Cloud Network Controller version 26.0. After completing the wizard with some information, we should proceed to step two. We're going to log into the controller and complete its wizard to automate the deployment. Now that we have reviewed the steps, let's check the prerequisites to have a successful installation. Prior to launching Cloud Network Controller in AWS, you must validate to comply with the following requirements in your subscription. In the case of AWS, two accounts are required. One, in charge of the infra, which is for the controller and catalysts, and another one for the VMs nesting the application. This would be necessary to implement the discussed use case. Also, keep in mind you must be subscribed to the following products. Are you ready? Let's start validating everything that we need. After being logged in to your AWS console infra account, let's search in the top bar for services quotas. Once found, click on it. We would take as an example the Elastic IPs quota, but you should check this for every prerequisite. Navigate to the left menu, click on AWS Services, search for a parent service called Amazon Elastic Compute and click on it. Now in this menu, let's search again for Elastic. The quota name that we have to validate is EC2 VPC Elastic IPs. As you can see, we have 20 of them assigned. This means that we have more than enough to meet the requirement. If for some reason you do not meet the request quota, click on the name you want to edit. Click on Request Quota Increase, navigate to the Change Quota Value field and enter the desired new limit. Then click on Request button. Once that is done, you would have to wait a couple of minutes so the changes get reflected and you can move on with implementation. Remember, as I mentioned previously, you would have to check these values for all the prerequisites. Now let's validate the second part of the requirements that is being subscribed to Cloud Network Controller and Catalyst 8000B products. To do that, we navigate to the top bar and search for the words Marketplace and Subscriptions. Once done, click on it. As you can see, we are not subscribed to any of those products. So let's do it. This is done by clicking on the left menu, Discover Products. In this new menu, search in the Marketplace bar for the Cloud Network Controller product. Once found, click on it. This would take us to the product overview. In the top right corner, we click on Continue to Subscribe. After this is done, we accept the terms. We just have to give it some minutes for this process to finish. Once subscribed, you will get the following banner. We're done here. Let's go back to Marketplace, manage subscriptions, and validate we are subscribed to Cloud Network Controller. Once we confirm our subscription, we navigate to the left menu and click on Discover Products to subscribe to the Catalyst 8000V. Once in this menu, we search on the Marketplace bar for the Catalyst 8000V. Then we click on the product Cisco Catalyst 8000V Edge Software BYOL. This would be spun automatically when we configure the controller. Now we would repeat the process, but for the Catalyst 8000V. We click on the product and continue to subscribe. To do it, we click on the top right corner on the button Continue to Subscribe. Then we accept the terms and wait for the process to complete. When the process finishes, we get the following banner. This means we are good to go. Let's navigate back to the Marketplace and click on Manage Subscriptions to validate we are subscribed to Catalyst 8000V. As you can see, we are subscribed to both services, Catalyst 8000V and Cloud Network Controller. 
One last step we must do before deploying the controller is the creation of a key pair. The reason being is to utilize a public and private key to secure the credentials you use to prove your identity to an Amazon EC2 instance. Now let's proceed to create the key pair. First, we have to open the EC2 service on AWS console. On the left menu, we click on key pairs, then create key pairs on the top right corner. Set a name that would reference this installation, just for the sake of housekeeping. Everything else must be default. Once finished, click on the Create Key Pair button at the end of the view. That would download the key pair to your computer locally, and it would be ready to use in the EC2 instances. In this case, the controller and Catalyst 8000V that would respond automatically once we configure the controller. We have finished all the pre-checks. Let's start with a Cloud Network Controller installation. Now we go back to the home console by clicking on the AWS icon. Once there, we click on the AWS Marketplace subscription link. Then on Cloud Network Controller subscription, we click on Manage to start with the installation. Now on the subscriptions menu, we click on Actions and Launch CloudFormation Stack. Now, at this moment, is when we start filling out values to configure Cloud Network Controller. We select the software version 26.01c. Then, select the region you would like to deploy the controller. Remember, it must comply with the prerequisites we checked in previous steps. Default everything else, then continue to launch. On the top right corner button. In this next view, select the action Launch CloudFormation and Launch. In Create Stack view, we must assure Radio button template is ready and source must be Amazon S3 URL. This action will automate the wizard presented to us via CloudFormation in order to configure Cloud Network Controller. Then we click Next to proceed. Now, in the Specify Stack Details form, we set a name for the stack. This could be anything. Now let's change the field Infra BPC Pool. We only have to alter the second subnet to 10.35.0.0 just to have something different in each cloud. Remember, in Azure we configure 10.33.0.0 as configured in Multi-Cloud Business Continuity Part 2. Moving forward, we select the availability zone where this installation would reside. So in this region, we select AC US East 1A. Let's now type a password that would be utilized in order to log into Cloud Network Controller. On the SSH key pair field, we select the key created in previous steps. We are also adding the access control value, which is the ACL that allows us to have reachability to the Cloud Network Controller from anywhere. If you want to be more restrictive, you can do it by setting up an IP or subnet. Then we type on access control field 0000/0 to have access from anywhere to the controller. Set assign public IP address as true. This should be configured this way so an elastic IP gets assigned to the controller and we can connect to it to configure it. Then click next at the bottom. Let's set a tag that would reference the controller EC2 name. The key should be name and value could be anything you wish. Then at the very bottom, click on the right corner next to continue our config. On the next view, scroll at the bottom. In this link, you get a summary of all the values submitted to the configuration. On the blue rectangle, mark the checkbox. At last, click Submit on the bottom right corner to automate the deployment of the Cloud Network Controller. This would trigger the installation. In this panel, we can monitor the progress of the deployment. Once CloudFormation finishes deploying the workflows, we can validate all the objects created automatically and proceed to configure the controller. First, we navigate to the EC2 service dashboard. Then we click on Instances. As you can see, a Cisco Cloud Network Controller instance has been spun due to the automated process. This is the instance that we would configure in a few moments. Now, let's check the network construct. On the top search bar, we type the word BPC. 
Once the service is retrieved, we click on it. Then we select your BPC's link and observe a new BPC has been created and has the infra subnet we configured in the template. Now that we have validated the automated deployment is successful, let's proceed to configure the controller. To do that, we click on the EC2 service, then on the left menu on the link instances. Once on this view, we select the cloud network controller and review the networking tab at the bottom. We copy the public IPv4 address, automatically assign and paste it into a browser to proceed with the configuration. This has to be done in a HTTPS format. Accept the certificate and log into the cloud network controller. Type the username admin and the password you configured on the wizard and click login. To start the configuration, click on the let's go button and then on begin first time setup. Now remove the pop-up by pressing the let's get started button. The first thing that we are going to set up on the controller is the DNS and NTP servers. To do that, click on the edit configuration button. We have to add at least one DNS server and one NTP server. First, we add the DNS configuration by clicking the add DNS provider link. We type a known IP for the service and click on the check mark to accept. Now we configure NTP by clicking on the add providers link and typing a server address. To commit, click on the check mark. Once finished, click on save and continue to proceed with the configuration process. Our second step is to set up the region management for the cloud network controller. This is fundamental to connect AWS to other clouds and control the policies to the EC2 instances. Let's begin. Since we are having everything configured in US East, network construct automation and EC2 instances with our application, we are only going to set up cloud network controller in this region. We must do three changes. First, enable transit gateway. Confirm and scroll down. To mark the checkboxes for the Catalyst 8000B automated deployment and transit gateway stats only for US East, click OK to accept the changes. Click Next at the bottom to proceed. To configure the automated inner workings of the communication in AWS, we scroll down to Hub Network. This is something proprietary of AWS. It is the mechanism to establish BEP sessions from the transit gateway to the Catalyst 8000V to interconnect the accounts nesting the application. To configure, click on the Ad Hub Network link. Set a name and an autonomous system that has not been assigned to any system in other clouds, in this case Azure that we already configured. Enable Transit Gateway Connect. Now let's select the region where this hub network would operate, in this case US East. Click on Add Setter link, then select Region link. Finally, select US East from the region menu. Then at the bottom, click on the Select button. Now let's configure the subnet that would be utilized to establish the PGP session. A random IP from this network would be assigned to the Transit Gateway. This subnet must not coincide to anything assigned previously and should have a mask of at least 24. To configure, we type the values and click on the check mark. Now let's click on the Add button at the bottom to proceed with the rest of the configuration. Now we configure the BGP Autonomous System number. It has to be different in every Cloud Network controller configuration. Make sure Assign Public IP to Catalyst 8000V interface is checked. We now set up the username and password for the Catalyst 8000V routers. Just remember, admin is not an eligible username for this configuration. In this case, we will set up Cisco as a username. We have to confirm the password. The next configuration is in charge of setting the bandwidth of the interconnection between clouds or regions. In this case, we will choose the 50 meg throughput. Leave the rest of the configuration as default and click Save and Continue. As soon as we get all the check marks, we click Done. This finalizes our deployment process. Now let's click at the bottom, go to Dashboard to validate the deployment. After a brief time has gone by, we can check on Cloud Network Controller Dashboard that a transit gateway and attachments were automatically configured and two Catalyst 8000V were created. Now let's review those objects created in AWS console. Click on the networking tab and copy the IPv4 public address. Now let's connect to it via SSH. Open ACLI and gain access with the respective credentials configured on the wizard.
The intent is to validate the interfaces configured automatically and are ready to interconnect with Azure that was previously configured. We run the following command and validate the output. As you can see, all our interfaces are up and running. Also, if you noticed, the interfaces are using 10.35 network assigned in the controller configuration wizard. This means Cloud Network Controller is completely deployed and ready to be managed by Nexus Dashboard Orchestrator. Thank you very much for making it all the way through. As part of this series, we will follow up with step 3, which is installing Nexus Dashboard Orchestrator and deploying multi-site. Stay tuned for the next video. Bye.